Now, many people regard this man as a bit of a clown, wrongly, in my opinion, and usually because they've only ever seen him in this position, driving one of these, his Sinclair C5 electric car, a device that was somehow tragically both ahead of its time and somehow behind its time, too. But in my estimation, this man, Sir Clive Sinclair, is one of Britain's all-time greats, a kind of genius. And one of the reasons is this, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, 16 or even 48K of computing power at your fingertips in 1982. In many ways, this device and this remarkable man kick-started the British IT industry. Before Sir Clive's creation came along, computer games were the preserve of amusement arcades. The ZX changed all that. You simply plugged the computer into the TV and played games without needing a pocket full of 10p pieces. It was kind of like our little punk moment uh, for those kids growing up in the early 80s. This was the first kind of computer where you could tell your dad that you're doing your homework when you're actually playing, I don't know, Chucky Egg. They always had weird names, like Fat Worm Blows a Sparky was one game. I remember having Batman on this, and it took about an hour to load it up. And then if you died, it was another hour. It... But you accepted that. Yeah, you, that was fine. It was, a, it was a great little machine. I loved my Spectrum. While many games for the ZX Spectrum came on cassettes, some were a DIY affair, requiring the gamer to type the code themselves. Imagine the kids now. You've got to go down your local news agent, right? Grab, grab the, your favourite magazine, then turn to the game, and then start typing the code in line by line. Can you imagine? Halo Reach. It would be like, be like, I don't know, Encyclopedia Britannica. It's